that's how we played the, our alternating bass, right, with our standard little tune here, kind of the Mississippi John Hurt style, and now we're going to rag this up and make it more of an East Coast ragtime blues style. Some of the guys that did this were the most famous ones were Blind Blake and Reverend Gary Davis. So the chord progression's the same, the basic alternating bass is the same, kind of. So here's the new twist. So this has been our standard C alulternating bass. So fifth string, fourth string, sixth string, fourth string. Boom, 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 boom. Okay, so here's how we rag it up. So our second bass, so we are our, our kind of offbeat bass. So here's our downbeat bass, on this case the fifth string. Instead of just hitting the fourth string on the next bass note, we make a chord and we kind of accent it. So just like in rock and roll we have that backbeat accent on the drum. Well it's the same thing here. So boom, chick, boom, chick. It's kind of a boom, chick. But it's really emphasized and it's a chord. I'm hitting actually rather than just the fourth string, I'm hitting the fourth and the third string. So that's that sound. That's our chick sound. So it's going to be important to, I'm kind of muting it at the end so we don't have a lot of ringy jangliness happening, but it's going to be important to first get that figured out. Okay, so before you try to put it all together, you're going to want to spend some time just making those kind of two note chords, right? So we're strumming two notes at the same time. So where before my attack has kind of been picking away from the string, I hit the string and as, as my thumb kind of moves diagonally away from the next string to avoid it, now we're going to actually pick into the string. So if you look closely at my thumb, you'll see that I've changed my angle of attack from being, I'm kind of hitting the string with my pick straight on perpendicular to the string and then plucking away now i'm leaning my pick into the string and making a little bit of a a brush across the two strings there and if you get a little bit more a little bit less once in a while it's not a big deal it's not necessary to be super precise about it but most of the time you're going to want to try to get a couple of notes there and so if we add in our downbeat basses now and we'll alternate back and forth between the fifth and the sixth string on our downbeat bass and our second bass our offbeat bass is always going to be that little partial chord on our fourth and third strings okay and then we get that jump to it boom here's another little detail to work towards. Um, when I play my fifth string bass, the downbeat bass, the first one, I'm actually picking into my fourth string and stopping there for a second and then doing the strum. So I pick in my string, my thumb pick actually stops against the the fourth string so I'm kind of snapping that, that um, pick into the fourth string and then strum, boom, strum, boom, strum, boom, stops briefly on the fourth string, and then strum. So you can see all the time I'm doing that new attack. I have my thumb angled like this, my thumb pick angled, and I'm driving into the strings rather than kind of picking away from them. Boom, and that's really important. And then when I move to my my sixth string now I go into I pick into my fifth string but I'm not going to fret it so this is or I mean pluck it so this is a tricky part I've got to kind of hop over it and then do my strum okay so that's takes a lot of practice I pick into the fifth string kind of hop over it and then do my strum But you see, listen carefully to the note that I'm, the sound of that, that first bass note on the sixth string this time. See, when I pick away versus when I drive into that next string. See how there's so much more punch to it? That's just really important to the sound. So we 
drive into that string, we hop over the top of it without making a sound, and then we do our brush chord. And now let's alternate between the fifth string and the sixth string on our downbeat bass. Brush, brush. So each time I'm driving into, on our downbeat bass, I'm driving into the next string and then I'm either brushing it, in the case of the f five, the fifth string, brush, or I'm hopping quickly over it to my brush. And now let's add in the melody. So the melody part is going to be the same. We won't kind of analyze the details of it. So. So that's the first phrase, our C phrase. And then. Okay, now on this F, since we're playing our melodies on sometimes on the third string, and our um, our second bass note is against happening on the fourth string, our offbeat bass, it's a little bit harder to get those brushes in, and it won't always happen depending on exactly where we're at with our melody, and that's not a big deal. But we're still driving in, so you'll notice I'm still driving into the fifth string when I play my sixth string bass there. So we put those two phrases together. Again. time and then we go back to a C phrase again but now we're remember we're not playing that G note on the first string it's we're playing the open note and there's our G chord and once again we're doing our driving our sixth string bass note and the pick into the fifth string and then hopping over and getting that um, partial chord on the fourth and the third string and a lot of times I'm kind of you know I'm using the same muting idea that we did with our our Texas blues but I'm not necessarily always laying this edge of my palm down on the bass to mute notes but but if things are getting a little jangly like they do on the G chord because I don't have uh, fretted notes in there to kind of loosen up so when I'm doing this on the C I'm kind of I'm strumming that and then I'm right away lifting up my second finger which is fretting the fourth string I'm just releasing the tension I'm not lifting it off the string I'm just releasing the pressure so so I kill the, the note there so I'm getting that real sharp kind of chunky sound rather than a ringy sound so I want the chunky sound not the not a not a ringing sound a chunky sound so like that and that's harder to do with the the G chord here because I don't have any fretted notes to work with so um, one of the things I sometimes do is I kind of bend my um, second finger backwards like this to just touch those strings to kill it or sometimes I'll use my um, picking hand palm to kill that that um, backbeat note or sometimes I use a little bit of both of them together after a while the different types of muting kind of get automatic and you don't really think about it anymore but let's look at that G chord a little bit okay so that's how that ragtime bass goes